right, back at it. All right, guys, I'm sitting here with Justin Jotpla. We'll say, uh, we'll say Jotpla is your last name. Yeah, Justin Jotpla. Easy. Justin Jotpla. So uh, I got a handful of questions here, some from the community, some from me. We're going to be going through, hopefully getting to know you a little bit more. I've known you for a while, so I'm not too worried about knowing yeah, you. We've been friends way too long. <laughs> it's. I think my mother's jealous at this point. So we'll see. I guess we'll just get right into it. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do? Who are you? Just give me a little TLDR of what Justin Mr. Jotpla is. All right. Uh... You want me to say, like, my age and shit, too, or does that even matter? That's all up to you. doesn't matter. Okay. All right. Well, as you said, my name is Jotpla. I, uh, I am currently a content creator on YouTube. I primarily stream. Uh, sometimes I also chop up videos and do little reviews and, you know, like, montages and shit, too. But uh, I also... I'm a hardcore Gundam guy. I'm super into Gunpla. Haven't really been able to build lately because I've been in the middle of a move, but as soon as I can get back to that, I absolutely want to do more content involving that. Um, Super into like horror movies and anime and, you know, first person shooters. I mean, I love, and I should say loved Counter-Strike. <laughs> um which is actually how me and my buddy Khan met. So, yeah, that's uh, that's me. So the thing that sticks out to me the most about Gunpla is uh, is that any relation to how you came up with your your handle, Jotpla? Yeah. So back when I first started building, I would take pictures of my kits all the time. And I was just kind of like shit posting them wherever, like on Facebook and, it, you know, people on Facebook, they're like, I don't want to look at this shit. Like, I don't want to look at your, your weeb hobby, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I was like, oh man, I should, uh, I should like pick up Instagram or some shit. So I was like, man, I used to go by the name, uh, dot JPEG and eventually one day, this is like a little bit of a side story. I should add that. And, uh, one day somebody started calling me, uh, peg jot and cause they just like to fuck with my name, whatever. So I was like, oh man, I should just shorten that and just call myself jot. And so like, it was kind of weird. Like I got a, like a nickname, like even with my like IRL friends, they would call me jotty or whatever. So it just kind of stuck and I'm like, oh, I should just make like the portmanteau, like jot plus like jots plastic models. So that's kind of how it all came together. That's fucking, that's actually pretty sick. Does PLA actually stand for plastic models? So when you say Gunpla, it's like Gundam plastic models? Yeah, so the word, like the phrase Gunpla, what it, it's the joining of Gundam and plastic model. <laughs> so it's just like one phrase, this is Gunpla. So yeah, it's Gundam plastic model. So that's how I got Jot plastic model. Gunpla is one of those words that just, it feels good to say. I don't it know else how to so say that. It feels so good to say it, dude. Like, it just rolls right off the tongue. It's nice. Yes. Uh, you, you got a good name there. It's a solid name. I like Thank it. Um, I do not know fucking jack shit about Gundams or anything like that. I watched uh, Gundam Wing when I was growing up a little bit when it was on the air, but I don't know too much about it outside of that. And models, as far as I, my knowledge consists of I used to I used to see a couple of model cars in some convenience stores or hobby shops or whatever, Hobby Lobby, etc. Every once in a while or a plane. I'm like, oh, it'd be cool to do one of those. But it always seemed a bit too complicated for my taste. It's pretty cool how the two the two scenes kind of merged. Yeah, it's um, it's really not as bad as you think to uh, to build a model, um, especially like because I actually used to work at a hobby shop for a while uh when i would suggest kits to people you know people were like oh i want to build cars or whatever and it was like little kids so you know of course they're going for like the crazy hard models like the 
you know, Ferrari with a million pieces that they're not going to be able to glue together. You know, it, they're, they're probably going to fuck it up first try, right? So I would always tell them. I fucking them, would. <laughs> God bless. I, I'd fucking shit you know, that honestly, up. I probably would too on my first try. Um, so I would always suggest to them, hey, why don't you pick up one of these Gundam kits? I, I know it's a snap model, uh, which snap models are kind of looked down upon in the modeling community. But they're a really great entrance point and they have, you know, articulation and they move and, you know, they just look cool and like little kids would just gravitate towards them. So it's very easy to, you know, to show little kids like, hey, this is really cool. You can make this with your hands. It's like a more advanced Legos. And they were just like hyped on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's kind of sick. Uh, the you call them snap models. Is that what you said? Yeah, they're uh, snap together models. Yes. Snap together. Are though you said they move? Do the regular non snap ones? Do they not move once you put them together? So like, if you were to put together like a model car, even a glue together one, most of them at least roll. Okay, like it, at least with the tires and shit. Yeah. Uh, but like a Gundam kit, you can actually like fully pose the arms. You can like fully move the legs and you know, get it in all wacky kind of poses. It's almost like a super fragile action figure. Oh, okay. That's kind of cool. I always yeah. thought that from some of the images that I've seen of your work, even it seemed like uh, once it was done, it was done. You couldn't, you couldn't do too much with it, especially when you do, when you build the scenes or you build, you know, the environment and stuff to go with it. It's very, very cool, but it kind of seems like it's a, it's a one and done. So that's kind of nice out there, at least reusable in the way where once you build a kit or a model or whatever, you can do, different poses or different shots with it yeah man when i when i would do um like photography for my kits because I'd, I'd get like a light booth and everything i'd like test out like a bunch of different poses and find the ones i like and swap out accessories and do things like that like really to like show off the flair of the kit um but every once in a while you just find like one pose that's so good that you don't want to take the kit off of that pose because you feel like that's the one that really displays the value of the kit and the the greatness of the design of that kit. That makes that makes sense. What um you said you've done some things, you post some stuff to some different communities and whatnot. Are, are you yourself in a community or do you have like a like a I'm not sure how the Gunpla community works. Is it like a fucking Discord server or <laughs> you know, or are we thinking or is it more in person? Um, What's the community like? So there's kind of like the the two sides of it. There's the internet community. So like there's a bunch of different Facebook groups and there's a bunch of different, you know, subreddits. And uh, honestly, like the biggest place for Gundam on the internet is like Instagram. It's like the best place to go. Like you just, it's all pictures. It's great feedback. It's a very welcoming community. Uh, I remember being really overwhelmed with how supportive people were of me posting my work when I was first getting started, even if it was just a simple snap together, you know, like all I did was just straight, uh, I should use the term straight build when it would just be a straight build. So just out of the box, nothing crazy, no added paint, just build it in stickers, right? People would, would give you critique and stuff like that. And I thought that was really great, but the best part of the community is when you have um, like a local hobby shop to meet up at and you meet other builders and, you know, you find other people that are like weird like you. You're like, oh, yeah, like it's kind of weird. Like I'm like a grown ass man, but I like little anime figures. And they're like, yo, I do too, bro. <laughs> so then <laughs> you just like get together and build with them and you find uh, build days where it's basically just a room with a bunch of white tables, you know, like the long ass like white lunch tables like uh yeah like fucking Yu Gi Oh tournament or something right like you, something you would play like beer pong on and uh you just get a bunch of dudes in a room and just fucking build and hang out and bullshit and talk anime or talk about the hobby and that was always my favorite part uh i moved away from my local community just because i you know i had to go out of state but I still keep in contact with them like super close. They're like brothers to me. So that's actually really cool, especially since they're you're building something with your hands, you're putting effort and time into something. So I think the the community around that would be a bit different than if you were to just 
go to a park and compare pictures of anime statues or something, you know, <laughs> you know, right. it's, I think it's a bit different, um, especially since you're actually putting physical work, putting effort and stuff into it. You said painting before and stickers. Is that part of the process? Is there, is there kits that come like fucking like non painted, like some 40 K stuff or some shit or. So like, uh, basically the kind of the rule of thumb is like the older the kit, the more work you have to do to it. Um, so like the very, very beginning kits are all glued together and there's like no color separation. Color separation is like when, uh, let's say the front of the kit is blue with yellow thrusters on the chest, right? Mm -hmm. Those thrusters are all going to be the same color. It's all going to be blue. So now model kits have evolved so much higher that, uh, like the yellow piece is going to be yellow and it's, it's not something you have to paint. But a lot of the time, if, uh, if they, for whatever reason, have like a weird molding process when they're working on it at the plant and they can't get the color separation just right, what they'll do is they'll give you like a, um, like a, a sticker sheet to replace said sections on the kit. And I got really tired of that fast. So I was like, that was my big motivator to start painting so that I would never have to do that again. Um, but yeah, I, I think the stickers are kind of cheesy <laughs> personally, but, but I'm not going to knock you if you use them because you're at least trying the hobby, you know, especially, uh, especially when we can do crazy stuff with paint stickers just feels like a easy cop out kind of thing. Yes. Do you have any favorite kits? Anything like that? How many have you put together? Uh, fuck man. I've lost count at this point. Um, I'm going to say I've probably built around like 50, 60 kits and I have a backlog of like another like 40 kits I still have to build. <laughs> Uh, cause I'm, I'm a collector too. So they're just chilling like in your mom's living room or something. Oh, uh, I had your dad's bathroom. There's just, just Gundam <laughs> kits to the ceiling. <laughs> like, you know how like some people, like you walk into a kitchen and like you look up and they got like cookie jars on top of their cabinets or like little chops, <laughs> alcohol and shit. bottles. Yeah. Like yeah. precious memories and bullshit. But like, instead of that, it's literally just Japanese Gundam boxes with the God labels sticking damn. out. So I know what they are. <laughs> That's so awesome. It's cool that uh, that your family is supportive of that too. I've, if I were to be like, "Hey, mom, I'm gonna put a bunch of anime weeb shit on top of the counter. I'm gonna have to have to move the the precious sourdough starter or the the marinara that's been here for a bit." <laughs> She's like, she fucking beat me with a wooden spoon, dark. Yeah, that's the mobile soup marinara. Has got to go. <laughs> <laughs> God fucking damn it! Um, oh. Are you building right now? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh... Shit. When's the, when is the last time I built? The last time I built was mm, like end of February, early March. So it, it's been a hot minute. It's been a couple months. Uh, the last thing I built was uh, Bandai makes these, they're called figure rise kits. They usually do like Dragon Ball Z and they just started doing Naruto ones. Um, and I was teaching my good buddy, uh, Mugi Mikey how to um how to build so me him and his his girlfriend axel did a uh we did a build stream and that was the last time i built that sounds fun as fuck to be honest it was a ton of fun um not currently building built in the past you got a, a fuck ton of of uh back order <laughs> back order <laughs> projects on the way you gonna be I, worked on i didn't answer your question though about the uh what my favorite kit is Oh yeah, hit me with hit me with that. You got you got a couple favorites. Yeah, so my very favorite kit is the Master Grade GM Sniper Two. Uh, I know you've seen the picture, uh, but that was the kit that I um, that was the kit that I won my uh, GBWC qualifier with. Fucking um, hold up. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Qualifier. 
Yeah. What GBW, do you mean? GBWC? Oh, I, There's I, competitions for builds? Yes. There is a uh, international competition called Gundam Builders World Cup. And uh, it's very, very competitive. It's like the super sweaty anime build off, basically. And that's uh, fucking absurd. This whole time when you put, would post shit, I thought it'd be like just flexing. Like, hey, look what I can do. Look what my fingers can do, and yours <laughs> can't. This be some like to describe to anyone listening. These kits would be fucking immaculate. It'd be like, uh, like a like what foot foot and a half by foot foot and a half square. And it would be just crazy detailed scenes of uh, like maybe houses or trees, uh, a plains, fences broken, super detailed bushes, all that stuff, grass, dirt. And this model would be positioned in the middle, and um, they looked absolutely insane. Some of those, so I guess, I guess naturally it would default to competition because that seems to be the the human way of things. But that's interesting that they would have like regulated qualifiers and 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 stuff like that. What what, what does a what does a prize look like in something in one of those qualifiers? So if you if you win overall for your country, because it's every country has a the has fucking like a Olympics. We Basically, got goddamn yeah. build Olympics. That's so yeah, fucking sick. Yeah, dude, it's fucking lit. So, uh, my so for example, my qualifier was at an anime convention. It was at ASEN, which is an anime convention in Illinois. And uh, I think I ooh, 2018. Yeah, I won in 2018. And when I won my qualifier, I won. Uh, I got a mod a uh, medal for best in show I got like a glass plaque that said like you know 2018 best in show GBWC at ASEN and then I got about like $250 worth of kits that was Uh, just for a qualifier yeah this was for a qualifier that's insane and uh, like two of the kits were like brand new releases like literally had just come out like people didn't even really have them yet. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty sick. I think I ended up actually selling them cause I didn't want them. There was other stuff I wanted. I'm very picky about Gundam kits. <laughs> <laughs> How much does a kit go for? Uh, depends what you're looking to get. If you're looking, cause there's different grades. I should start off with that. There is SD high grade master grade and perfect grade. Uh, SD are like the little baby ones, the ones that are like, you know, uh, like a little bit smaller than like a can of Coke. Um, the high grade ones are like the ones that are about normal size. So like, mm, like maybe five to six inches, uh, depending on the scale, obviously from the show. But, uh, those an, a high grade will run you anywhere from like ten to forty dollars, depending what you're looking to get. Like if it's a regular release or a premium release, um, and then a master grade, which are the ones that are about eight inches to a foot. Those are about uh, I don't know anywhere from like twenty five to a hundred bucks. That increases with like difficulty or amount of parts. How, what 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 determines like price as far as like that range? One is usually like the the size and parts. So yeah, if it's if it's like a cheap little, um, I shouldn't use the word cheap, but if it's like a smaller kit, like a smaller master grade with not a lot of parts and not a like a lot of separation, or maybe if it's an older one, those will run you like like I said, probably about thirty ish bucks. The more advanced ones start to get up a little bit more because there's more parts or if it's a premium release, then the the prices go like through the roof. So the usually the the bigger the master grade, the more expensive it is. So like I think the most expensive master grade I picked up that was like a regular release was the it's called the O. And that shit is like. I think after you build it, it's like a little over a foot tall. Like maybe even taller than that. It's pretty fucking big. That's fucking huge. (laughs) 
Yeah. And then, of course, so after uh, after Master Grades, there are Perfect Grades. And Perfect Grades will run you anywhere from, like, 100 to 400. What's the main uh, differentiator between the top two grades? What, what what makes the difference? Is it size still? Like, if you got a yeah, one of, $70 one is, kit versus a $500 kit, is one going to be fucking life-size? The difference, one, is the scale, right? So, like, HDs are 1, 144 scale. High grades or master grades are 1, 100 scale. And then perfect grades are 1, 60th. The difference between master grade and... um perfect grade is one the size two the level of articulation so like more vents and shit are gonna open up and stuff and three they usually light up oh that's fucking cool that makes more sense then because i was like uh i'm thinking like if it's just size that's directly right to the price like what would be the main but that would make sense if there's if there's more movable parts if there's you know if there's extra features if there's RGB, <laughs> right. shit like that. It'd and be, then it'd be a bit different. The thing I was saying about something costing around like five hundred bucks for a um, for a perfect grade would be something ridiculous. Like uh, they make these things called. I was talking about premium releases. There's a thing called P Bandai in Japan, which is a like a online exclusive thing that you you know you can't buy them in stores. There you have to like be signed up for it and like all this other shit. And it's basically like the Gundam version of Supreme. So like, you got to be like ready to buy the shit on the spot. And then what a lot of people would do is they would pick them up and they would scalp them in America. So even though it might only cost like 300 bucks in Japan, you're probably going to pay like upwards of like six in the States. That's crazy. That's cool that they have those like exclusivity and stuff like that makes, uh, I guess, I don't want to say fake value, but that kind of sense, it gives it like a more exclusive. Yeah, I guess exclusive would be the right word. Feel more rare, stuff like that. That's pretty neat. Moving on from there, what do you? What are your plans for Gunpla in the future? You have anything cool planned? Are you still going to just be doing builds, or what? Uh, you going to be competing anymore? Stuff like that. Um, I don't know if I want to compete anymore. I feel like. Uh I feel like I need to practice again. Like, I feel like I'm very out of the loop because I, I paused on building for so long. I kind of went infrequent for a little bit with me moving around all over the place. Uh, cause like before, before I moved, man, I would pop out a kit like one a week, one every two weeks. And that was with me like painting and detailing and shit. Um, so I want to get back in the swing of that eventually. I Since I've been streaming and stuff, I really want to get into the habit of like doing a build stream, like a creative stream, kind of show people, you know, what building is all about, show them that it's really not as scary as they think it is, and maybe kind of turn some people onto the hobby who might be into the anime or are just looking for something different to do. So I... Uh, I, I had kind of one back in my community. I had a lot of, uh, I had kind of like a leadership role. So like people would come to me to like learn how to paint and do stuff or like they would always come to talk to me if they were looking to get into things. So I kind of want to like continue that and kind of pay it forward because someone helped me do it. So if I can help people learn about the hobby or like learn how to do certain things or at least direct them to someone that knows something better than I do. I want to be able to do that. That's fucking cool. Yeah. It's a cool, it's a cool mindset to have. I think it's uh it's healthy too, to be in a community with people like that, that kind of mindset. Um, if someone that's listening to this now wants to get into Gunpla, what would be like step one? Like what would they have to do to start building besides of course, purchasing a kit? Like what would be like basic do's and don'ts or anything like that to get them going? Um, so the first thing I would do is go on YouTube, watch some videos of, of people building, kind of see what it's like, see, like make sure you want to get into it before you make an investment. Um, that, I kind of feel like that's kind of like the ground server with like really any hobby. Uh, but number two, I would say look for local hobby shops in your area and see, go see what their prices are like compared to the online because, uh, 
I'm a big supporter of like, if you have a mom and pop hobby shop, like support them. Cause there's not a lot, there's not a lot of them anymore. Mom and pop hobby shop, baby. It's like, it's like the same deal with comic book shops. It's like, go yeah. support your comic book shops, go support your hobby shops. Like, you know, I don't even know locally if I have any hobby shops, we have like hobby lobby. We have some of the mainstream ones like Michael's. I don't even know if that's really a, a, a hobby shop. Um, but they do have some sort of more mainstream stuff. Like if you wanted to put a, a sick ass flower thing together, bouquet, bouquet, yeah, a, bu- uh, <laughs> a, a, a bouquet, a, a bouquet. You, you never know what's copyrighted nowadays, dog. They're taking music down on, off the internet, so the flowers are next. You know what I'm they're, saying? They're taking our words, dude. They're taking the words. <laughs> Oh um, God, fucking Christ! Yo, that um, actually. Yeah, we don't me... have no mom and pop stuff, so I don't even think we have comic book stores. Sorry, I don't want to cut you off. No, you're good. I was gonna say that actually brings me to uh, my third point. Uh, now because Gundam has become so popular again, it's almost hitting its resurgency, uh, like like it was in the '90s. Because man, it was fucking banging like late '90s, early 2000s when Wing was out. Like the, even mm-hmm. you said you were into Wing. I it was the same for me when I was a little kid. Uh, now Hobby Lobby and Target are starting to carry Gundam kits, which is crazy to me. Cause I'm like, damn, of all the places, like, man, I can go to Target, get a fucking like pair of flip flops, get a loaf of bread, walk down the, uh, the toy aisle, pick up a Gundam kit. <laughs> like, That's actually crazy. I'll have to go look. I might be interested in doing some, maybe something small. One of the smaller kits or snap together or something just to have like on my desk or a shelf to be like, I fucking, I built that shit, dog. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of extra like tooling and painting and, and applicating, applicating, applicators, paint, whatever the fuck else that goes into doing some of the high end stuff. So I don't even want to get into that kind of shit. But for, uh, for like on the side hobby, getting into it, I think I could do that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, man. The, the great thing about, about Gunpla is that you can take it as far as you want it. If you just want to buy a kit and just get a pair of nippers and a knife and do that (laughs) shit right out the box, like you're fine. You know what I'm saying? If you want to like do subtle shit, like just add in some like line accent to like make the grooves and panels pop out. You could do that too. Shit. Like the most I really do nowadays is I just paint. I just like painting and you know, I like, weathering and making the shit look like it's worn like it's actually like seen some shit you know so everybody's got their level and don't let anybody tell you that you gotta build higher than what you're doing crazy ass shit yeah yeah that's that's real cool though do you do uh do you do commissions or anything like that yo uh good okay (laughs) here's a good story and a, a good life lesson i was at the mall and this was right after I had like won that contest, the like the qualifier. Mm -hmm. And I was like steezing, bro. Like I had so much, what's the word I'm looking for? I had so much confidence after that. I was like, shit, dude, I'm going to go get my fucking Instagram name embroidered on my hat. Like I was like that hyped that I like won this shit. So I I went to like lids at the mall and I was like talking to the dude at the store. I was like, yo, this is like super lame, but I really want to get my Instagram name embroidered on the hat. He's like, oh yeah, cool. Like, what is it? And I'm like, oh yeah, it's, it's like, it's drop plug. And he's like, oh yeah, like that's kind of an interesting name. And I was like, yeah, it's, uh. It's kind of like based on uh, like Gundam stuff. He's like, oh, Gundam? Word. Let me get in on that. So then he starts bullshitting with me about Gundam. (laughs) And he's like, yo, I love this shit. I've always wanted to build a model kit. I said, yo, I actually build kits. I work at the hobby shop down the street. He's like, oh, man, I should come in sometime. I said, yeah. I uh," And then I said, I actually also like have been looking to do commission work and like if you wanted some work done, I'd give you a good price. And he's like, Oh word. Yeah. Let me get that. So me and this guy exchanged, you know, information and he told me what he wanted. I gave him price. And then I like went and I started working on the kit, bought some supplies and stuff. And I told him it'd probably be about a month or two. Cause I was like 
working a lot around that time. And I really wanted to make this shit like banging. And uh, I would email him or wow, email. I sound like a fucking grandpa. I would message him all the time. <laughs> I would go down to the post office. I would message him all the time and I'd be like, yo, uh, I got an update for you. Like, this is what's happening or yada, yada. Like, keep him updated. Tell him, you know, how much he was going to owe me for uh, supplies because that was going to be like added on to the the bill at the end. Yeah, the total price. Yeah. And I get everything done. Take pictures of it. This shit is blowing up in Gundam groups. This was like. I, I think I posted it into some Gundam group and got like fucking like 500 likes on it. So I was like, damn, this shit's sick. I can't wait to sell this to him, you know? And then out of nowhere, he's, he just messages me after like three weeks and he's just like, oh yeah, I can't buy it anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, bro, are you for real right now? And he's like, yeah, man, uh, I was in like a car accident. And I was like, mm-hmm. And as I'm friends with the guy on Facebook, if you're in a fucking car accident or some shit, you usually like post about that shit. Like, yeah, it's all over everything. Yeah. He just, yeah. So the dude fucking lied to me and like kind of strung me along. And I was, I just, whatever. I ended up giving the kit to like one of my friends because I thought it was cool to just give it away as a gift after that. I didn't want to look at it anymore. I was fucking mad. Um, that fucking so sucks. Yeah. I've always learned, uh, I learned two things with this. One, Stay firm on your price. And two, always ask for a deposit up front. Yeah. When I do graphic uh, stuff, I try to do 50-50 at least. But it's a little bit different because there's no really supplies or anything involved. So right. getting a more deposit style, especially after an estimate's been told, is probably the smartest way. Or just having them pay for it up front. You can just be like, hey, if you pay for it up front, I'll give you like a, a fucking discount on supplies or something or labor. Some shit like that. They yeah. think that they're getting like a sick deal and then you don't get fucked out. I gave him a good price, dude. I'll, I'll tell you what I gave him. Like if you want to, if you want to know, yeah, cause yeah, it was yeah. a hell of a fucking deal. All right. I told him with like the estimate with supplies, I said, yo, like 140 bucks. Is that like with labor and everything like total? That's with labor and everything. So he was basically paying like, 70 for my labor, 70 for the kit and supplies. That's not bad. Yo, compared to like what other people charge. I could only fucking imagine. I could yeah. only fucking imagine people charge crazy ass shit. Yeah, I thought it I thought it was fair, man. I thought it was super fair. I didn't think I fucked them over or anything. Cuz if if it's if it's 70 for the kit and then you have supplies on top of that paint and whatnot. So that's probably 20, 30 bucks. So you're only getting you're only getting like <laughs> what 30 40 maybe 50 on top as, as the actual commission oh no i i was so. it was 70 with like 70 like 40 for the kit like 30 for supplies that's oh, okay. how i broke the 70 down because okay. i knew it wasn't going to be like a, a bunch of supplies but i needed paint and thinner and shit like that so just thinner alone can get kind of pricey that's a little bit that's a little bit more worth i was about to be like you're you're putting all this fucking effort in for like 20 30 bucks like nah. i mean it could be worth depending on the situation but if it's a if it's a a multi week like you know handful of tens of hours kind of thing it's just like ah, you know even if you do minimum wage that's still a little rough but that's that's a little bit more fair for for you um that price is still pretty good for a full blown kit that's uh like the highest quality I'd pay that. I'd pay like one one fifty for like a, like a eight inch, you know, something like that. Six eight inch. Yeah, it. it I mean, the price would all be based like also on the rarity of the kit. So. Yeah, the model and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. That's not too bad. That fucking sucks for you, but yeah. So to round it back, you're doing commissions. Or? At some point, at some point, I want to get back into it, but I don't. I don't feel comfortable. Uh, charging someone money for a kit in my current building status because I'm a little out of practice. Once once I get back in the swing of things, I might consider it. If so. uh if someone wants a kit from you, could they just DM you or do you have like an official email or something for kit specific stuff or I would say just like hit me up on Instagram or Twitter. Like that'd probably be the best the best route to get me until I uh get some sort of email set up for it. Slide to those DMs. Let's move on. We've been talking about Gunpla for a while. 
I don't want this whole thing to be about Gumpla. I want to no, know some more about, stuff. I could talk about Gundam for like fucking ever, homie. Like. I fucking know your ass can. So <laughs> let's let's go to something else. What uh, what you been playing? Uh, right now I'm playing my main game because you know, like most most streamers have like a main game they play like when they're in between shit, right? My main game is Valorant right now. <laughs> so I've been loving that. And then for story games, I've been playing The Last of Us 2 over the weekend. So I streamed it for like 11 hours last night. So I'm pretty fucking tired. <laughs> God bless. I guess for context for people listening to this in the future, it is currently June 21st, 2020. It's like uh, 11 p.m. Eastern right now. Last of Us just came out a couple days ago, right? It was uh, Friday night, yeah. Friday, two days ago, yeah. Nice. Because I'm not sure. Hopefully, I'll get this up in a couple of days, but I don't know. Worst uh, comes the worst, it might be a little bit. So, just so we have context on that. Yeah, I like Valorant. I play Valorant. I like her a lot. Is that, is that what you've been mainly doing, just Valorant and then story games on the side? What other story games have you been playing? Uh, I was playing Doom Eternal before... Uh, I haven't played that yet. I I don't know, man. I just kind of like pick up and play whatever I want to do. The last one I played before that was uh, Mafia 2 because the remaster came out. Mm. And then... uh, So you don't really stick to any sort of style or anything? It's You can be whatever type of game? I have a preference, that's for sure. Like, I I definitely like FPSs the most. Um, But, man, I'll I'll play whatever looks cool to me. Because, like, I'll fucking go from playing... You know, like back in when I first started streaming, I'd go from playing fucking like Counter-Strike to playing Super Mario Odyssey to playing Yakuza 1 through 3 in like the scale of a couple weeks, you know? (laughs) So I'm I'm all over the place. I'm looking at the Ori games right now, Ori in the Blind Forest. I played through a lot of the first one, uh, but I want to redo it and play the second one. The same second one came out recently, so... I really enjoyed doing the first, so I'm pretty stoked to get through that series. Something that you might enjoy. It's a side scroller, but the story is really, really. Uh, I don't want to say sad, but kind of. It's intense. It's very. It just gets you, it's, it's one very of those good. games that just strikes those feelings the right way. Just fucking hits you. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty good. Um, I would definitely recommend that if you're looking for something after The Last of Us. Streaming Valorant. Is there any other games you stream? And what kind of schedule you're on, as far as that goes? You stream to. Uh, you stream to to youtube right yes so that's a little out of the norm a lot of people that i talk to or where i see is usually a, a twitch streamer and then you have that that one fucking random guy that's that streams the mixer to be edgy or something <laughs> <laughs> i mean but i, I YouTube mean youtube stream people, that's pretty streaming on youtube is just about as as edgy as being the mixer guy to be honest uh, I'll, I'll put myself in that category <laughs> i mean we're saving baskets at that point now we have two baskets you know Twitch and then everyone else. Right. But um how is that how is that treating you? How is that different from cuz you used to stream on Twitch or no? So I did used to stream on Twitch back in uh like 2015, 2016. Uh and I had like a little following but it wasn't like anything too crazy. And of course, you know, life should happen. Couldn't really continue doing it. But now I'm at a point where you know, I got time. I don't have anybody stopping me. Any sort of life event stopping me. Nice. Might as well take advantage of it while you can, especially with the um, pandemic and everything else is happening. Try to make uh, some silver linings out of what's going on. Exactly. For people who don't know, myself included, what's uh, some of the biggest differences between streaming on Twitch and streaming on YouTube? Is there any like big comparisons that you can make as far as maybe how they function or or work? Man, do you have to have a different mindset or anything like that? Well, I'm not sure what Twitch is like now. So I'm kind of just speaking from back then. Back when I was streaming on Twitch, it was more, I don't know, it was more about just having like an appealing looking, you know, uh, profile, like having all your like little layouts and your doodads with, you know, like, oh, here's my Instagram. Here's my donate button. You know, like having all that shit set up. Yeah. And I remember just people going like, ham on overlays and layouts like that's kind of like i remember that just blowing up like crazy to the point where like people had the dumbest fucking overlays that just made shit unwatchable like i don't (laughs) i don't want to go watch your stream if it's covering up half the game information uh fuck those days god Um, damn but yeah 
What about uh? What about like as as um? What about like ease of use? Would it be harder to stream on YouTube if you're a Twitch streamer or vice versa? It's probably a lot easier to stream on Twitch. I feel like there's a lot of hoops you gotta jump through with YouTube. Um, like for instance, when you first make a YouTube channel, uh, you have to wait 24 hours before you can stream. Uh, also the like the path to monetization and stuff like that is a lot tougher on YouTube than it is on Twitch. Cause like what getting affiliate can happen, you know, fairly fast for, at least from what I've seen. Um, yeah. The barrier to entry for that's pretty, pretty, I want to say it's, it's not existent. It's there. It's like 50 followers and like, I don't remember what three average viewers or something like that. Yeah. And then that's you have just to stream a, like a total of like 500 hours in like, a certain amount of days. Yeah, it's it's to make sure that you're consistent. So once you're consistent and you have someone around or a couple people around, then they'll give you a sub button, basically, so you can get some support or the people that watch you can at least support some way. Yeah, with YouTube, it's like, oh, you got to have uh, 4,000 hours worth of watch time on your content, and you have to have a 1,000 subscribers, and then maybe, if you're lucky, we'll approve you for monetization. <laughs> Yeah, that's fucked. So that's it's rough. it's a little bit tougher. Uh, I'm almost there. I'm getting closer. So you thinking you're gonna stick it out through YouTube, or you are you gonna try to do go back on Twitch, or you have any plans or thoughts, ideas with that? I got a little bit of a game plan. Um, right now I'm thinking what I'm gonna do, unless YouTube does like some crazy shit that makes it more viable to stream on YouTube. Um. I think what I'm going to do is after I get my thousand subs and everything built up on YouTube and I get, you know, monetization and shit like that. Cause I do want to kind of like try to turn this into a career. Um, I will move over and start growing my, my Twitch out. And then after a while, you know, I'll figure out if I want to do like the membership thing on YouTube or if I want to do, uh, you know, like Twitch affiliate partnership, you know what I'm saying? What uh? What are some games that you're looking forward to that are coming out this year? Are you stoked for like Cyberpunk or is anything else that's on the horizon? If it even fucking to? ever comes out, man, <laughs> <laughs> that's I don't true. know. Cyberpunk is gonna even come now, out. But yeah, part of me, part of me is kind of um excited that it's getting delayed. That way, we know it's gonna be perfect when it comes out, and it's giving me time to to make sure my computer's beefy enough to to make it beautiful when it runs. So I'm I'm kind of okay with it, but at the same time, it's like, fuck, I want to play. So it's kind of rough. But we have Valorant uh, in the meantime. Yeah, I was going to say, like, this is going to sound weird, but I think my, like, two games for the year already came out. <laughs> Which was, um... oh, shit, actually, you know what? There's another one I'm looking forward to. My games for the year that I was looking forward to as a whole were, it was one, Valorant, two, The Last of Us 2, which came out as we've recorded this. Uh, the third one is Ghosts of, uh, Ghosts of Tsushima. I think that's uh, yeah, that looked that. cool. That looked fucking sick. Yeah, that's next month. That's in July. Damn. Uh, and then I I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk if it ever happens. And then I'll probably pick up Yakuza Seven when that comes out. If that c- gets localized this year, because who fucking knows? Sega takes forever. <laughs> God bless. I don't know too much about Sega, but um, I do know a lot of people bitch about about stuff like that. So yes, I'm pretty excited that uh, that Valorant came out. It's like a, a tasty surprise. I was a big fan of CS. I played that more than probably any other game that's ever come out. Uh, I played a lot of StarCraft too, but I'm very excited to have another game in this in the space or the CS space. R6 kind of filled that void for a little bit. I really enjoyed R6, uh, Rainbow Six Siege, but having a more direct competition to CS has, has been great for me. Yo, it's like, uh, it's kind of like, you know, let's say Counter-Strike is Gatorade, right? You're like, man, I really love Gatorade. I want to keep drinking this shit. But after a while, kind of gets kind of gets old, right? So then another company comes up, Powerade, aka Valorant, and you're like, all right, I could I could switch it up on this. So then it was kind of like it's slightly different, but it's like still kind of the same. So it's like just it's just fresh to you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
a lot of people hate on on like art style and stuff, but I well, I think they confuse art style with graphics because some people say that Valorant has bad graphics, and I don't think they understand the difference between good and bad graphics versus an art direction or an art style of a game. I think it's nice. I think it's clear. It's it's uh, it's very clear. The clarity of the game is nice. The information's there. So I enjoy it a lot more than I did CS as far as that goes, um, especially in those situations where you have like a CT on a, on a dark background or in a dark corner or head peeking, head glitching or something, and you can only see the very top of the dome versus Valorant where a lot of those things don't really happen. So it's, it's less stressful in certain situations or you feel like when you die, um, it's because of something, a direct cause of something instead of something that you're like, how the fuck did I just die? Like what happened? In a lot of those situations. Did you see like any of the new Counter Strike updates that have come out recently? I watched. I look. I watched. I uh, looked at some of the patch notes. I haven't seen um, anything. I haven't played or haven't watched anything. But I've been keeping up with the patch notes at least. They've they've done a lot of of catch up. They're trying to do a lot of quality of life stuff. I've seen. So. Valorant coming out is like the best thing to ever happen to the Counter Strike dev team because. Dude, I mean, me and you playing it for years, we both know, like, Valve just didn't give a shit about what was going on with Counter-Strike. It was just like, hey, let's make skins, make money, and then put out, like, a new map, like, once every other year or some shit. Now, dude, it's like they got huge graphical updates. They're, like, trying to make the game run better. They're trying to add more UI stuff. Like, it's, it's really, they're working on it, man. They're trying to bring people back. They're trying. I would go back to play CS if they updated it, basically. Basically, like even, if they put 128 tech servers. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. If they made if they took CS and brought it to 2020, if they made a new CS game, um, CS fucking 2020, or if they did Source 2 or something and did a lot of changes, it's just so stale. It's the same, you know, six, eight maps for years. You know, there's, there's nothing new. When they do do new stuff, it's always just exclusively skins. They started doing the operations, which were cool, but they were few and far between, and they weren't fun enough to really grind out. I think I've I've paid into every single one of them, but I've only gotten the silver on like a couple. I don't think I've gotten gold on any of them because I just didn't care about grinding out the weird fucking bot modes or the weird um, things that were kind of clunky to begin with. So if they brought the game to 2020 uh, to directly compete more with Valorant, I think that uh, will be set. I think that they would have a good contender, but they would have to do a lot of work currently to bring CS on par. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I still play it like every once in a while. Like I'll play like maybe once a week just to like fuck around with some people that for some reason won't move to Valorant. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, like I'll still go play with them and have fun and like it's, it, it's one of those games that it's only fun to me if I have like a full five stack though. Cause I, I don't know, but trying to communicate with people in that game is just, it's gone. It's, it's different. Yeah. I do. I will say, and then we can go on from here. I will say that so far with Valorant and random people that you get matched up with on your team and stuff like that, the, toxicity or just the level of enjoyment with teammates have been the quality of that has been a lot lower than cs i know cs has a lot of ridiculous shit that happens i have a lot more time in that but with um with something like cs i found myself having people who were way more willing to to work together as a team or they were funny or they're willing to you know forget mistakes or help people out i had i found a lot of people like that a lot of my friends that I have now or people that I know have come from situations like that where I found in matchmaking, for example, both with Valorant and the time I've put into that so far over the last couple months, I haven't really found anyone to even that sort of degree closely at all. There's been a lot of, a lot more toxicity and a lot more like, Hey, I'm a God, you know, shut up and, and stuff like that. Instead right. of, instead of community, I think maybe that has to do with, with not having ranked out yet in 1.0 versus beta i feel like there was a lot of times where you could have just more genuine fun in some cs situations um versus i think maybe just because of, of how stagnant all the cs stuff was like if you play inferno three billion times like after a while 
you know the angles, you know, you know what to do. So you just start looking for fun <laughs> shit from your teammates. Like I guess that's the the sap. You know but, what I'm thinking about? I'm thinking about nah. Nuke. <laughs> Fuck. We played Nuke exclusively for like eight months. Only map we played. Because oh, of our mutual friend back in the day. But fuck <laughs> <laughs> i guess uh, maybe valorant's too new to get any of the any of that stuff or just the uh the people that i'm playing with are, are new because we've had a lot of, of new people new to fps is for say well the other playing with with valorant the other thing too with valorant is that they don't make it uh possible for you to just grind one map you don't get a choice you you have to oh, play the that's entire true. queue that's true too. That's random queue. Maybe we'll see a change to that. Hopefully it's something that they're going to be doing. I know they're adding in a surrender option for when you're down teammates, which is going to be nice. Um, but yeah, that would be that would be nice, especially for ranked. But we shall see. We shall see. Moving on. We've been talking about Valorant for a while now. I don't want to go on forever about it. I got you. Uh, we'll start closing things up, start wrapping it up a bit. I have a handful of questions left and then we can get out of here. So... To start it off, to start the end off, what are your overall plans, Mr. Jotpla, for the rest of 2020 going into 2021? What are you thinking? What you got going on? What are you doing? Anything cool? Let me let me break out the flow chart real quick. <laughs> I got you. We can take a hold on. We got a um we can take a little chillax, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so get that whiteboard out. I would say the plans as are right now are one. Oh my god you all right this is coconut pineapple oh <laughs> oh my <laughs> fuck who the fuck oh no oh. you all right i fucking yeah continue i'm just gonna mute up sorry what was it dude it's coconut pineapple ice I got I got oh. so these sparkling ice things. You know you know what those things are. Yeah, I got um, I got one that has flavors that I usually don't get. So I'm I'm sitting here with fucking piss colored, yeah, dude. coconut pineapple dog shit. That probably God tastes damn, like that's disgusting. That probably tastes like balls dipped in suntan lotion. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. Okay, to continue. Sorry, to continue. Right. What are your uh? The fuck, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? The 2020 job plan. All right. Number one, I'm trying to get a thousand subs on YouTube. Number two, probably start up on Twitch at some point. Number three, get back into building Gundams soon because I really want to do that. Hell yeah, big dad. Number four, I want to kind of do some more voice acting stuff i know we didn't really talk about that on the uh, you know the rest of the stuff but i definitely want to do some more small roles like i did for my buddy i voiced broly in that video uh i completely forgot about that i didn't even think about bringing that up um yeah we can talk about that real quick just, just hit it real quick you did uh the voice of a dragon ball character dragon ball z dragon ball super character um in a youtube video right yeah i voiced like a skit? Uh, yeah I, i'm Link here. Let me look up the name of the video so I get it right. I'll include all this stuff in the description as well, too, for everyone to just click on. Cool. If you're watching from YouTube. So uh, I'm really good friends with Moogie Mikey. We're like childhood friends. We go way the fuck back. And he needed somebody to voice Broly for his video, Sonic Meets Goku. And uh, I had like a little bit of a short segment. I'm not in the video for like super long. But uh, all the reception I've had, like, towards me doing the voice, and it's it's been incredible. So I definitely want to do that. I already had some other people hit me up to do the Broly voice, so I, I wouldn't mind, uh, you know, popping off on that. It, it, all, it also helps with, like, networking, meeting new people, you know, growing. Yeah, you got your, it sounds like you got your hands in a bunch of different pots, which is kind of cool. Especially, it's, it's nice to see content creators and, and people of artistic mindsets to try to apply what they can or be creative in different styles, different scenes, different applications. You know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's cool to see instead of someone just, Hey, I'm a, I'm a Fortnite streamer. That's what I do. Nothing else to, uh, Hey, I do a variety of different things. I can do a bunch of different shit. 
So it's it's real cool to see which was more people um, that I knew that specifically that I knew that uh, that did that. I'm sure there's a fuck ton. I'm sure there's people out there that know nothing about these type of people, but I don't, unfortunately. So <laughs> yeah, so I'll put that in the, I'll put that down below. If you look, if you're watching on YouTube, you can click on that, check out the video. I'm gonna do a section starting these interviews back up that ask about peripherals because I'm a big fan of peripherals, um, EDC, everyday carry stuff. Um, I kind of like that kind of thing. Yeah. So I wanted to ask some specific questions about you, and what you do, um, what you do, what you like as far as that kind of stuff goes. So we'll start out real quick with your keyboard and mouse. What you got? What's your preference for keyboard and mouse? I'm rocking the uh, 10 keyless Corsair K65. Um, RGB. It's- yeah, it's the RGB one. Mm. I swapped out the keys. I don't have the plain black keys. I have the white, uh, I think it's PDT. I think that's the term. Yep. Uh, PDT double shot keys. Those are beautiful. And uh, I have some of the keys swapped out with some green rubberized uh, shits I picked up from like mechanicalkeyboards.com or whatever. Oh, hell, you should take a picture and I'll, I'll just put a... I'll put an Instagram, Instagram. Fuck yeah, me. Yeah, let me. I'll put a imager album in the description with all the stuff. Yeah, let me fucking about. like clean all the dust out. <laughs> oh yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you got a, you got a little while. I gotta still gotta edit the shit and stuff yeah. too. So you got a little bit. We'll we'll get that up so people can have some visuals. Let's see everyday carry stuff. What do, what is your go to when you leave the house? Like, what do you have on you? You got anything cool or anything unique that you bring with you everywhere? Oh hold hold up. We forgot about the mouse. We didn't talk about the mouse. You know what? You're fucking correct on that one. What what kind of mouse you rocking? I am rocking the Rocket 122. The Rocket Kane 122? Let me Ooh, that's the new one that just came out. Yeah, it's the one you actually recommended to me. The, it's, a, it's a good mouse. That's a good mouse. Yeah, I got the is, wireless version. I enjoy the wireless version too. I have the, the wired one. So the it, mine is, yeah, the Kane 122. The only difference between like the 20 versus the 22 is the coloration. Yep, so like white I think, one's black, right? Yeah, the twenty is black. The twenty two is white. Hell yeah, that's uh, a sick mouse. If you're looking for peripherals, there you go. So Joplin uses. Yeah, man. We're going to EDC. So that's what I was saying earlier. What uh, what what you, what you take with you when you leave the house? Wallet. Uh, got to put on the preem hat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Glasses. Uh, are those for looks or are those for play? You know what I'm saying? No, they're for, they're for play. I need them. I need them because <laughs> I'm not playing without them, bro. I need them to okay. live. <laughs> Like, I can see okay without my glasses, but, like, I w- I'm not trying to drive without them, you know? Hell no. Uh, Usually got to put on the fresh sneaks, you know? Maybe some J's, some Air Maxes. Yeah, the phone. Need the phone. I can respect it. Keys. That's a solid EDC, my friend. Thanks, bro. Solid. <laughs> I'm going to hit you with this one. What's your favorite food right now? Favorite food right now? Yeah. What, oh, you, what you been yeah. eating on? Oh, you're a dirty fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he, oh man! All right, um, you've been eating a lot of Panda Express, Panda Express. So we'll we'll leave it at that, dude. That is like the official meal of the pandemic, bro. Like not leaving the house. Like I fucking wish I had one. Getting to getting food delivered to me, like it was like free delivery, and then they did this shit where like you got the. They had this thing. It's like a family meal, bro. It's normally like. 35 40 bucks and you get like three large entrees and like two large sides so like i would eat like part of it put the rest of it in the fridge and then you would know like we'd be playing valorant it'd be like three in the morning i was like yo bro i'm gonna go hit up that panda express and it happened like every week to the point where you were like yo why the fuck do you always have panda <laughs> it was every fucking night dog like i'm gonna rush down a long because i got some panda to eat real quick be like dog what the fuck are you doing god damn it Panda, I wish I had one close to me. I've had a long ass time. Next question: What is what, what kind of shows are you watching right now? Ooh, that's a good one. I've been mainly watching like horror movies. I just uh, resubscribed to Shutter, which is like that horror movie uh, streaming site that's kind of like Netflix. Mm, yep. Uh, and I usually just like I'll be chilling on my desk if I'm not in Discord, like bullshit with people. I usually just be playing like random ass like B horror movies. I got a big thing for this dude named uh, Joe Bob Briggs. He's like an OG, like horror movie guy. He's kind of like Sven Gulli. Have you ever seen Sven Gulli? Is that that uh, Japanese guy that does the crazy shit? No, he's a, he does comics. No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Then 
Uh, Sven Gulli is, um, man, he used to be on like, so back in Chicago, he'd be on like channel nine and he would do like the movie at midnight. So like, let's say for instance, uh, he was showing nightmare on Elm street Two. He would be the dude that like talks in between the commercial segments and like narrates the movie, kind of like talks about it, like makes jokes about it, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. So Joe Bob Briggs used to do that, like back in the nineties, some shit called like monster vision. It used to be on like TNT. I knew nothing about it, but on shutter, he's kind of like hit a, uh, like a revival and he just like picks out random ass movies and just gives you a bunch of information. He's usually like got like a goofy, like scorecard before the movie starts. So he'll tell you like, Oh, like this movie's got like three sets of boobs, 25 kills. Like, you know, like he'll like just go down like this list. I think it's fucking hilarious. So I, I'll watch that a lot. That's fucking awesome. What kind of music are you into right now? What you've been listening to? As of right now, I've been listening to a lot of rap music. I've been more into the rap music lately. It kind of changes though. It's like seasonal. Like I'll listen to rap music for like, most of the time and then every once in a while I'm like yo I want to go back and listen to some metal and hardcore music because man I used to be very very big into metal and hardcore music so I can respect that kind of shotgun in these so we can get you out of here you got any guilty pleasures right now guilty pleasures I can encompass anything anything comes to your brain my guilty pleasure right now because I I watched let me give you the background for this before I tell you what it is I watched that movie Rocket Man like two weeks ago, the the movie about Elton John, mm-hmm. and I was like obsessed with Elton John, so I was just like listening to random shit he did, and I forgot that he did a cover of Stan with Eminem for like an award show a while back, and I can't stop listening to that shit, because I love Elton John's version of like Dido's verse, like the... He's gone cold. I'm wondering why. You know, like that shit. God so, like, I'm fucking obsessed with that, dude. Like, we'll be playing uh, Valorant, and I'm just like, yo, I gotta say this shit. Like, I'll just say it in game for no fucking reason. Everybody hates me. Like, <laughs> that's definitely a guilty pleasure if I've ever fucking heard one. Yeah. God damn it. I had one guy reach out to me because we did a little bit of QA. I had a couple people um, respond and reach out to me, but they all were encompassed into things that I was gonna say anyway. So one of the more unique questions I did get to ask you was, um, do you have a Yankee with no brim or a brim with no Yankee? Man, if I was going to go, I I would have Yankee with no brim. I would Yankee, do Yankee with no brim? brim? Yeah. Yankee I'm feeling with it. no brim? <laughs> I'm feeling it. I, I feel the no brim. We don't need brims. 2020. Yeah, no brims. Hell no. You got any uh, last topics or thoughts or points or anything you want to bring up? Um... God damn it. This is hard, bro. This is hard because I, I was, I thought I had something and I was going to just say something stupid and get it out. Honestly, man, I don't think I got shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. And that's fucking fine, doc. All right. Let's close her out though. Where can people find you at? Yo, if you want to see me and my great content, <laughs> so I'm very pompous right now. Go to my YouTube channel, J zero T P L A. It's your boy Jopla. You can also find me on Twitter, and I occasionally post on Instagram. I haven't really posted there on a while since I haven't been building, but if you would like to look at my past works, definitely go check out the Instagram. And all of those are um, the same, at Jopla? All the same, yeah. And then Jopla, that's a zero instead of a, of a O. So. Yes, sir. All righty. So we got some shout-outs. You got anything for you? You want to shout anybody out? Um. Well, first off, I want to give a shout out to you for letting me do this. And hell yeah, big yeah, deal. you bringing this shit back because I heard your past work and I was like, yo, this man needs to keep doing this. So thank you. Thank you for having me on. Secondly, I want to give a shout out to Moogie Mikey, Axel Lazuli, my boy Deox, Kermo Giovanna, and uh, all the dudes in my Discord. Thank you so much for supporting me and like just pushing me along to stream and inspiring me like you guys do a lot for me and I don't think I could ever properly repay you guys. So thank you for sticking by me. I'm going to, I'm going to hit up. I'm going to sleep in here and I'm going to shout out fucking doom boy. Cause I see that motherfucker everywhere. Yeah. Doom boy. I see that motherfucker everywhere. He followed me on Twitter. So I like him. He's fucking sick. 
You know Doomboy and Papa Cat, man. They swarm, Hell dude. Yeah. Papa uh, Cat. Only fresh cat. Never <laughs> only fresh cat. I also want to give a shout out to my, my 708 Gundam boys. I, uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon. Getting some builds done. Hanging out. It's been way too long. So, love you guys. And that's it. Fucking hell yes. I think this has been a successful comeback into this medium. I'm excited to do more. I appreciate you being on. To let me experiment with what I got going on here. So, hopefully, I'll be able to get more people in. Maybe we can do a follow-up a couple months or anything like that. If you like this medium, if you like the interview, uh, do all the typical shit. Like, subscribe, etc. Let me know what you didn't like about it as well. It's always good to get some perspective on these kind of things so I can improve. Follow me on all the socials at ConClicks. It's on everything. It's K-H-O-N Clicks. Visit ConClicks.com for easy clickable links. No pun intended. If you have any more questions for Justin, Mr. Jotpla, you can find him at, at Jotpla on all the social media sites and whatnot. The stream, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how coherent my responses will be because this is like my one ounce of brain power because I actually have no brain. I just am. God so. damn it. <laughs> All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. I'll catch you later. All right, bud. Talk to you later. All right, man. Peace. Bye.